What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're doing well today, and before we even get into this, you guys knew what video it was going to be today, with the new release of any Huron track, whether it's a one-off track or a compound, it's going to get covered in the next day's videos, let's be honest, I absolutely love this man's tracks, everything that he puts out is super high quality, and annoyingly, I was at the gym super late at night when this originally dropped, so I couldn't record it for yesterday, but we've got it today instead, and my god, it's so nice, it's super pretty, all of the tracks flow really, really well. The motocross track has some massive ruts and massive jumps that you can really go like fifth wicked if you want to. Supercross track has a lot of line variations, some big lines, some small lines, uh, some split sections in there. And the pit bike track is just a hell of a lot of fun as well. So I hope you enjoy the video. If I could just ask before it starts to drop a like if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you keep coming back for more content, I'd really, really appreciate it. Enjoy the video. So I think the order that we're going to do this in is going to be motocross track first, supercross track behind me to the left second, and then I'll hop on the pit bike and we'll go over there as well. I think Huron's got a bit of a soft spot for pit bikes. He's uh, he's released... Uh, yeah, there was one on the Huron compound. There was a pit bike dedicated track, the Mosh Pit, that he released not that long ago. And now we've got another one on this one. So, um, I mean, I'm happy to see it. I really do enjoy riding the old pitters on this game. They are good fun. And I don't think they get as much... Uh, as much love as they deserve really but either way let's hop on this motocross track i have run a total of zero laps around any of this so far so this is all going to be first reactions with me and hopefully it's good fun i'm on the rmz 250 today which is a bike that i cannot remember the last time i ever used however i've been dabbling on the 450 a little bit the last uh, last day or so uh, hemi's a bit big advocate of it since the uh, beta 18.1b update that was done to the oem bikes and it's not terrible at all it's definitely like it feels quite strong in the corners uh, the place that i feel like it gets let down is uh, in supercross a lot of the time you end up kind of like singling into corners don't you like the 180s and such you jump into it a little bit and i found that the front end can be really really shaky and wobbly when you do that uh, compared to a bike like the yamaha for example i find the yamaha is so much more uh, sturdy at the front and then it lacks a little bit in whoop sections as well but i feel like that's one of the things that setups can definitely help with you know you're not going to get a bike completely stock that feels great outside of the yam i do run <laughs> stock yamaha settings um, but right now on the 250 right here i am running completely stock settings except for changing to the 120 rear tire because by default it's on the 100 which doesn't make much sense to me it's got like the 120 just has so much more grip and uh, barely any sacrifice for straight line speed land ah god so it's going to take us a little bit of a uh, a while to get used to this track there seems to be a lot of blind jumps um, some big boy senders that send this one oh sugar oh sugar uh, what I'm going to do, actually, to save my sanity, let's turn the map on. I did want to go with a bit of a, like a more raw experience, but I need to know where I'm going. That section looks sick, by the way. So you can clear the entire thing on the right-hand side where I'm looking right now, or you can check up a bit, then jump and double up and over this. And it's just very, very unique. Love that. Hopefully there's a lot more of that. I've seen there's like some split section stuff going on over on the pit bike track as well. Uh, I saw one section over on the supercross track when I was flying around for like the uh, the B-roll clips for the intro. And that actually is a lap already. So not the longest track in the world, but some big old booters. And there's one thing about Huron's Nationals tracks especially that I like, and that's how he builds his ruts. They're so easy just to get in and sit in and stick in as well. I find that sometimes with ruts they can look like they're quite good and quite inviting but when you get into them it you then your back end just pops out and i'm not sure what horan does but whatever he does he does it very very well so keep up the good work sir and uh, when i downloaded this today i've seen one uh, one review like you can leave reviews on mx bike shop uh, they don't get used very often i feel like a lot of time it ends up being like anything online people just leave a review if something's bad to kind of like poo on it i see that happen on a fair few of the tracks where maybe the beginners that say they tried downloading an aerial supercross track and say that it's really bad just because they can't clear everything perfectly every single time you know because there's actually a bit of skill involved um, but there was only one review on this and the guy said he, he referred to Huron as the jgmx of mx bikes and you know what i don't think that's a terrible shout whatsoever Huron is putting out consistent bangers which i'm always a fan for and i, I hope he stays around for the community for quite some time to come he definitely makes uh, my life and job a whole lot easier and hopefully you guys get a lot of enjoyment out of the stuff that he puts out as well and i don't mind 
the fact that a lot of the stuff he puts out is paid for because he still blesses us with something for free every now and then. And I feel like a man who always releases stuff of such high quality deserves compensation for his efforts. So I've got no issue with that at all. One thing that I've not checked out just yet. Oh god, I'm not going to go over it again, am I? No, I'm going to turn around and hit that. I really, really want to do it. Uh, I need to try and see if there is a tribute to uh, to Max lying around here somewhere, because Hurin always puts a little tribute to his uh, his dog that passed away, and I am determined to try and find it. We always pay respects to Max in these videos. We love our, we love our dogs on this channel. All right, let me try and hit this faster. Here we go, send it. Oh, now I've gone too far. Oh, Christ. Oh, that actually, that took it extremely well. I'm very surprised, I'm gonna crash now though. Oh no, hmm. Now, I won't lie. I'd never used the RM250 on the original Beta 18 update, but it was the only 250, I believe, that received any updates at all on the patch, and actually feels pretty damn spicy, if I do say so myself. Might have to just dabble with this a little bit and see what it's like in Supercross and Outdoors, because uh, whilst I've given up on 250 Supercross, I'm still uh, well in well involved in the MXGP 250s, so, you know, if the Yamaha, the banana bike, the Yamaha, the Suzuki banana bike might be uh, might be seeing the light of day a little bit more. It feels actually really, really nice, even on a completely stock setup. I know that uh, this track is on the... F oh, God. Oh, God. It's fine. See, look, again, landed it. No, no funky front end stuff. Uh, I know this track is on the flatter side of things in terms of roughness, you know, braking bumps wise, uh, so it's not been tested in that regards, but the way it turns... It was really, really nice, and I don't feel like it's really lacklustre under power like it used to be as well, so maybe it's a bit of a sleeper pick. I don't think I've seen anyone riding the, the 250 Suzuki yet online. I do see a few people on the 4, as I said, I'm trying to dabble on it a little bit, I just need to work out setup-wise exactly what it is that I'm doing, but yeah, watch this space. Who knows, it might be, uh, you might see me switch at some point. Love jumping into sand rollers, always a really fun thing to do on any track, I think he's got the scaling of that pretty bang on and we got some doubles down this hill and there's nothing on this track that I think is particularly difficult the hardest thing that you're going to find is timing with all these big jumps and remembering like what jump you're hitting now I want to try this right side and I want to check up a little bit so we just double double over that and then we step down oh, I've not got the speed oh Oh god, oh, that's another one. I'm going to turn around again. Oh god, this section is giving me so much grief, but it's, it's so fun. It's such a good section. I need to get it right. Right, let's get up and over this one this time. And doink. That's actually a deceptively hard jump where the uh, downside's so steep, but you've not got much room to work with there. Let's get. So I need to jump this a little bit further. Too far. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Right, third time's a charm. Here I am saying the track's not difficult, and I keep having to hit the same section over and over again. So we'll check up a little bit. That looks better. Stretch that out. Lovely. And then... Oh, I thought I had enough speed to scrub that, but I didn't. Oh, well. Oh, lad. No, I, I thought I was going to get one of them weird proboso moments where you can land on the back wheel facing backwards and just whip around and be absolutely fine. Um, I won't lie. Really enjoying this. I know I'm only like three laps deep so far, but you can see the the way the ruts are built, you can carry so much speed, and I fully expect to see people going for hot laps around here at some point. Cause it's it's one lem that I know people are going to enjoy just by how fast the tr the entirety of the track is. Like there there is at least one massive rut in every single corner for you. There's nowhere really that you have to check up if you want to hit everything pins and just throw it sideways. You can do, and the only thing that I'm I feel like I'm struggling with that I'm not doing much justice on is timing of the jumps, but I've spent three laps on it. I think it's going to take a little bit more than that to get used to it. This is a smaller double, if I remember. Yes. And then little tabletop here. I'm going to try the outside round here. I don't think I've taken it yet. Round the outside, little roller to the inside. And even like ruts like that, where they're really close together, usually I feel like my front end would like tag the inside one and knife a little bit, but it just seems to ride over it really well, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that is a combination of how the track's been built combined with this uh, this RM250. Are oh, you bugger? And whilst I seem to uh, be coming up short a fair few times on these jumps, I know that it's because of me. I, I keep I've got 450 like muscle memory stuck in my head and like checking up just before the top of every single jump. Whereas you don't need to do that on this bike, you can hit it as fast as possible. Now I want to see if I can actually hit these jumps cleanly this time, so don't check up on this one as much as I have been. Up and over, lovely. And I'm going to try the outside again up here. 
And we need to hit it with some speed. The R yeet. Love that. Oh, that's pretty much perfect. Yes, look at that. And then I've got to check up here because this is a little roller boing. Give the clutch a little bit of a blip, get the bike moving. Oh, and I forgot where the jump was. I forgot that we turned left. And Poboso, Poboso, he, uh, we're alive, we're alive. Okay, <laughs> thank God. So that right there is the Nationals track. I think you get the idea of this. Hella fun. Like, I'm definitely going to be coming back to this one as soon as I finish recording this. Let's hop over to Supercross next. So I've not got to change bike at least. And see how that goes because I've only played... Actually, yeah, I think I've only played two Huron Supercross tracks. That could be a lot. It could only be one. So yeah, I've, I've done the one on the Huron compound. Can't think off the top of my head. I mean, Mosh Pit doesn't really count. That's just like pit bike specific. I'm trying to think off the top of my head if he's done any more. I, I can't. I might, I'll have to look after this, after the fact, and, and have a look. But yeah, let's go do some soupy. And knowing me, I will flow probably a little bit better around there than I have done around the motocross track. There he is. Very important update. We found Max. Here he is. He'll be, be resting in peace right in here. Oh, what a cutie. I love I love dogs so much. I'm so I'm 100% owning a dog when I uh, when I live by myself or well with with my girlfriend whenever I move in with her. So Supercross time. Let's do it. I've copied the setup over already. Um, I'm guessing. And is there a proper start straight at all? Like, does this lead back round? It does. Obvious stuff. So. I need to take a note out of Rumsbook, I think, here, and not just send every section straight away. I think I need to just kind of double, maybe triple my way around the track. But this is a little step dragon's back over into quite a mellow looking whoop section, folks. I actually love that. It's a, a nice little uh, change of pace from the exceedingly difficult whoops that we've been having in Aerial all year. Oh, a little. This is this is what I mean. This is so like different to what we usually get in supercross tracks, where there's just split sections. That isn't the one that I was looking at earlier. Actually, I think there's one over to the right. Yep, literally perfect timing. We'll double, we triple, have the brake, lovely, up and over that, and then oh, is this a wall? Ah, uh, I mean, you could be very brave here. That's like, super brave. You could probably try and send that two or three rollers deep. And you best believe I'm going to do it next lap round. I'm probably going to crash on it, which I apologise for in advance. But you've got to send these things sometimes. You've got to, got to give it a go. Right, round to the right here. Little roller. This looks super cross triple E esque. And then we can step on to this next one. Oh, that was close. I had no idea how I didn't crash that. I should have probably should have wadded. Uh, triple, triple again. No. Oh, I don't think you'd want to. Actually, I think you want to check up so then you can step up onto this uh, platform. I feel like that would be the faster move and then we go step off we just double through here to make sure i get through it fairly clean double double that's a tr that is a huge triple holy if it isn't even is a triple well, i guess you could double it am i in first gear yeah there we go and then it's a little bit of a, a wall oh, that's a very strange section yeah if you can step all the way up and over that end one that is that's pretty huge and then i guess this is the, the old finish line jump up and over that bad boy Look around to the right, stuff, and then back here and across to the start straight. And that's actually quite a flowy track. Let's triple in here, up and I Oh, you can quad 100%, you can quad that. No idea again how I've not crashed there. I don't think we're getting over this triple. It's fine, we can check up and try tripling out. Oh, a little bit short. Then dragons back, up and over. Actually skim the whoops properly this time. Lovely. Try the left side, step down, step down again on the binders. Up. Well, I think on a 450 you could probably triple up that, but 250 seems a little bit of a stretch. And we go triple, triple. I'm going to have to send it again. I apologise in advance. I'm about to crash. Yo, yeet. Oh, maybe not on a 250. Might have to go one shorter than that. <laughs> oh god, the rut did leave a lead a little bit too far to the left there, so I had to cut back last second, which caused my trajectory to be uh, not ideal. But 100%, I feel like you could uh, hit some hit some big lines into there. It definitely jumped one less than I did, but the timing might make it a little bit a little bit difficult in that regards. So let's go double, double. I wanna let me just roll this, then I can step up onto the plateau, and then double down, and then go triple. Oh, this yeah, this this is a weird section right here. I need to kind of think properly about what I'm doing. The guy that did call Huron the JGMX of 
MX bikes did refer, I think that's the jump that you'd be referring to as a wall jump, saying that he went for a backflip on it every lap because it just kind of sets you up perfectly. And I, I do, I feel like there's a way of jumping over it. I've got to kind of channel my inner James Stewart. Now I'm probably going to crash here as well because I want to see if I can quad into this section. Do I eat? Which I, oh god, I overjumped it by a long way. I would go as far to say that you could step onto that. Like, just jump the entire thing, step on, step off. I feel like there's definitely some... There's a lot of opportunity for big boy lines on this track, which I love. I hate when Supercross tracks, they just kind of force you to do one thing and you've not got much freedom to do what you want. So, enjoying this, that has greased that. I don't think I could get that that good again. And can we triple up? Oh, yes! Barely. And then we step over, not far enough. I keep thinking that I'm just going to massively over jump things, but then there's another jump like right after it, which I could have downsided. Now we're going to try jumping into the sand here. We're going to go one deep, not two. So up and over that. Almost. I don't think for a first attempt to try and downside that one, that's not bad timing whatsoever. And then obviously when you get into a good rhythm through here, you can kind of double your way through the rest of it. You're going to triple this. It's going to step over and then double out. And we can triple through here. So we go triple, triple. Oh god, that is that is a stretch on a 250. Hell of a stretch. I think you gotta just stay lower than I have been. Uh, all right, let's go double, double. Then if I just go double here, double that. Let's backflip this, like they said on the review. Lovely. <laughs> he almost went too far. Jeez, I had to get on the binders there. And we jump out of the little. Let's call it a, a bomb hole. Big old double for a finish line. Inside roller. I am a big fan of this. Really, really big fan. Love it. I think one thing that Huron's always been good at as well is like, the colours of his tracks are always really easy on the eyes. Like this, it doesn't hurt to look at. It's definitely brighter than other tracks I've played. But it's just the right amount. I, I, I think it's just because I'm an old man, you know, as well, and I can't stare at super bright screens all day. And you'll probably find that in the editing process, I mean, making this video, I've probably turned like the brightness and saturation up a little bit as well when the editing side of things. So it might be slightly brighter on your YouTube video than it is me playing it now. But I really like it. I love the like. It's almost an orangey kind of dirt, and it's very, as I say, very easy on the eyes. Very, very pretty, and it, it's kind of. It does feel like it's out in the middle of nowhere i mean if you look around there's you've got your tree line and then that's it it's just off into i wouldn't say desert but you know what i mean just like wastelandy type vibes when you get further out and i don't mind it i'm here for it let me try it stepping onto this table again oh god getting the back wheel barely uh barely hooked on that try and triple this oh god that might just be a little bit too much of a stretch for the old rm that might be in 450 territory, if I'm completely honest. And I do feel like on a 450, you could huck up, up and over this wall as well. But, like I said, plenty of big boy lines to go for here. I'm definitely going to return to this track on a 450. Maybe, I don't know if it would be in a video or not, but we'll see how it goes. It's definitely one of them tracks I'd like to get some races going on, for sure. The motocross track as well. And I'm, I'm hoping this isn't just one of them tracks, because it's page. It doesn't see the light of day in servers. Because I'm, I am, I'm, if I'm honest, I'm getting so bored of seeing... Like, so the time of day right now for me is it's 1.51pm on... What's the day? What day is it? It's Monday today. And if I was to load up the MX Bike servers right now, I guarantee at the top of the list, all I would see is Forest Club, Winchester, maybe... Oh god, what's the other one? Dylan, Dylan Frisch's one. What is it? I literally made a video on it on the fast lines. Can't remember off the top of my head. But I guarantee that's all the servers would be, which is why I don't I'm not doing much online at the moment, because it's just either the servers are down when I do want to record online. Perboso, please fix. It's getting incredibly annoying having all these uh, series having to cancel or being delayed. But then it's also annoying that nobody really ventures out and tries these other tracks. And I know why. I know the majority of this game's uh, player base is, is the new guys that are learning the game on Forest and so on, but yeah, for someone like me, it does get a bit boring. So when I can fill up online lobbies and we stream and do public stuff together, it's so nice getting to play different things. And I feel like I shouldn't apologise for playing on paid tracks on stream because not everyone can get in. But I feel like I need to do it, do it for my enjoyment as well as you guys as well. Because things like this, they, like these tracks are what keep the game alive, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit off topic here, where people are like, why doesn't MX Bikes come to console, etc. Do you imagine how bored you'd get just playing stock Proboso tracks and stock Proboso bikes forever? 
because he doesn't have the licensing for this stuff. The reason we get away with these uh, OEM bikes is because they're mods for the game. They don't come as part of the game itself. Uh, another reason why they're free, I suppose, to, to, get, to get around all that sort of copyright. So, yeah, really good stuff. And Hurren always keeps the game nice and interesting for me. You can kind of expect something from him at least once a month, really, at the moment. He's been absolutely on the, the grind, so definitely keep him coming. And I think that shows off enough of the Supercross track for you guys to be able to see how many different line choices there are. I don't feel like I've done it too much justice in actually trying to get a, a general clean lap, but as a Supercross person myself, I'm always trying to go for the fastest lines possible. It'd probably take another 10, 20 laps of grinding to really get it down. But what we're going to do to end this video now is we are going to go on the pit bikes and we're going to go and try out that pit bike track because I've seen like ramp models and split sections and all sorts. So it should be very unique, very interesting. And let's go check it out. And uh, if, if you needed proof about what I was saying earlier, by the way, in, in terms of servers, we've got a Walnut, which isn't too bad, but I've played enough Walnut to last me a lifetime. We've then got the standard Paletta, Trial, Forest, Forest. Dreamland's quite nice, but look at look at the number of people that are on when I'm trying to record these as well. It'd be, it'd be it'd make such a boring video unless I do the Walnut one, but I wouldn't know how to make that fresh. But yeah, either way, pit bike time. Now, finally, we've got our pit bikes. And I actually... I hope at least that he's gone for the same sort of scaling as he did on Mosh Pit, because I'm on the slower pit bikes right now, and obviously you get pit bikes have a 125 engine in them, and then you've got these actually true pit bikes up over that, which they are slow, they are hella slow, but if the scaling is done correctly, then we should be a okay. Uh, I'm just going to roll this because I didn't downside that jump pretty well. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, these these jumps are pretty tiny, so we should be okay. The Although the finished jump looks pretty big, that's okay as well. There was a... Oh, there he is. I was about to say, I saw a ramp when I was doing the motocross track, and it is behind us right there. So we'll definitely give that a go and enjoy that. Now, this is... This isn't just a pit bike supercross track like I thought it was. It's a super... I mean, it's a hybrid. I mean, it's called Mini X, so I'm guessing it is kind of all-inclusive in the name. Up and over that bad boy. And I'm always torn when I ride pit bikes, whether I want to play in first person or third person now i always consider myself more of a well i am a first person player but oh, let's get up and over this first before i say anything oh actually i don't know actually i feel like let's go in first but maybe i'm just being a spud in uh in third person let me go in first let's see if we can go a little bit better <laughs> mini whoops for the mini bikes before that i think i can just go double double yeah, I should be able to carry more speed in first person. The reason I like third in these is just because it takes me back to like my MXOS ATV uh, Untamed days of riding pit bikes around those tracks. Just, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of nostalgia and I, I like seeing the uh, the small bikes on my screen as well. I feel like it, just a lot more fun. This is quite a unique layout. What is this? Go step on. Oh, look at that. Is, that's pretty sick. Pretty sick. I can't lie. Oh, let's go around here. Up and over. Oh, it already feels much better being in first person. Why was I even in third to begin with? Oh, this is a tricky whoop section. Get off the back of her. Shift up again and again. Right, let's try and rail this outside a little bit. Lovely. Oh, I shouldn't have railed it at all. Oh, God. I think you could probably jump that entire thing if I was to be on the faster pit bikes, which is why I don't really want to. I feel like it kind of takes away from the track a bit when you can just jump everything in, in one big go. Up and over this... And I'm going to send it down here into these rollers. That's actually went surprisingly well. These bikes can be hella tricky to ride fast because they're so... At where they are such a short wheelbase, they're so tricky to get around corners well. I always forget just how sharply they turn. You triple this. That is 100% a triple triple. So messing up that might be what's screwing us for the rest of it. I don't think I'm going to get up and over this now. Oh, no. That's all good. Shift up. Get out of the gearbox. Yo, yeet. Oh, my life is going to end. Oh, so. Oh, I thought I was going to get away with it there. So you need a very, very good run up that hill to get up and over that cleanly. But I think that'll just come down to me checking up a little bit and going for like a double-double rather than the triple that I am going for. Same, same with here, to be fair. I don't think I'm getting the speed to be able to triple into that sand roller. Let's go around the outside. Go on, off over shift up the gearbox again just gonna double that double again into the whoop section 
And they, they, I like, this is so nice. I, I'm such a big fan of like these unique little objects on tracks that we don't usually see because why not? Why make something standard and boring when you can kind of push the boat out a little bit? And again, just like the mosh pit track, how fun would it be to get a full lobby of players ripping around here together on pit bikes? Like it would be absolute carnage for everyone side by side. Let's short over this one this time. Double up and over, lovely, got it perfectly. And this one's quite short as well. And then we go double over the table. Send this. Lovely. I'm going to check up here a little bit so we can go double, double. Surprised my front end didn't yank its way away from me there. And we really open it up over this back section. Now I do still have the Erode on 1.4, which is what I've been running for the entirety of this video on all of the tracks. However, and you're not really noticing it as much around the pit bike track, and I, I just think that's because the way MX Bikes works with this sort of thing is it takes like the forces of the bike pushing into the ground into account, and obviously smaller bike, less force applied. I'm guessing. Am I going to get over this this time? Uh, oh no, that is. Oh okay. I mean that's better than clearing it. Let's be honest. Provoso's on our side actually. Yeah, at first I thought it would just be to do with how the tyres dig into the ground under acceleration, but apparently it's where like the suspension compresses as you're getting into a corner and exiting that really affects the deform a lot. So super light bike, as you can imagine, doesn't generate much force, and yeah, it must that's, that is just the difference. Oh, big stretch, love that. Lovely stuff, fast line there. And then I feel like you probably can jump all the way over this, but... I feel like it's much more satisfying just to go on off. I mean, that's that's the whole point of it. Maybe get a cheeky little tyre tap in there or something along those lines. I feel like this could be a interesting track to play on like a 125 or something as well. Like super small engine full-size bike. I imagine you'd be able to hit all the big boy lines. Uh, I, I only just really noticed like all of the cabins to our right. Uh, can you call them cabins? I, I wouldn't know the correct terminology for them, but it does give off that like like an MTF kind of vibe where everyone's got their own little bit that they stay in and wake up in the morning, do your motos, work out, all that good stuff. So really, really nice. And to be fair, I don't think they've got... <laughs> I don't know if they have a pit bike track at MTF. If they do, then sounds sick. If not, then that is completely justified. I think they're meant to be training to ride uh, full-size bikes, not these. But this is like, really, really good. Really good fun. And again, like, I, I think... I probably don't do these tracks much justice where I do like recording my first impressions. Can I triple that? No. But go and try it out for yourself. 100%. If there's one person that you should be uh, supporting when he races tracks, it's this man. He puts a whole lot of uh, love and time into it. And he's, he sounds like he's been on the grind. He's constantly putting more and more stuff out every single time. Downside this. There we go. And I don't think me spinning many more laps is really going to show anything else off to you you get the whole idea you get the whole vibe of the compound um i generally i don't think i can fault anything at all other than like that one ramp jump that's on the left that we're coming up here that i can't <laughs> that i can't get over i feel like it might just be a little bit too big if this is the scaling that he's going for is for these smaller pit bikes uh, in the description i'll put the obviously link of the track first and foremost but i will also put the link to the pit bikes again and just have a have a double little read of how you go about installing them because still i find people having issues getting them in the game and i don't know how you know just drag the bikes into your bikes drag the tires into your tires boom done happy days so if you did enjoy this video if i could ask you to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new i would greatly appreciate it let me know uh, what your thoughts on the track if you have got it downloaded and which one of the three tracks in particular are your favorite Thank you very much to Huron for blessing us with some more very fun content. And I think that'll do it from me. I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be happy. Bye.